Having said that, let me spend a few minutes to introduce the speaker of the day, Dr. Malak Vikram Singh Ji. Dr. Malak Vikram Singh is currently serving as the head of the Department of Commerce and Financial Management, Faculty of Commerce and Management Studies of the University of Canada. He obtained his Bachelor's of Commerce Special Degree in Accounting with First Class Honours in the year 2001. He obtained his MBA in Information Technology from the University of Moratua in the year 2005. After that, he completed his PhD at the University of Putra, Malaysia in the year 2012. The thesis of his PhD is the recognition of happiness as a psychological drive for innovations among the grassroots level investors in Sri Lanka. Dr. Nanak is a multidisciplinary investigative researcher who has published a number of research papers in different dimensions of digital transformation, as well as he was a co-author of the baseline study on illicit cigarette market in Sri Lanka. In 2009, he published a paper on the snail shell growth model of technology development in nation countries, which argues early adopters in technology would gain an unbridgeable advantage in the long run. He has supervised many MBA, PhD and DBA students in various universities on ICT adoption and digital transformation of business in Sri Lanka. With that diverse and rich introduction, without further ado, let me have the pleasure of inviting the speaker of the day, Dr. Malaga Vikram Singh. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Vikram Singh. Ladies and gentlemen, so, so before starting the session, so I want to thank the Central Bank staff for inviting me for this lecture. So first of all, I might say I'm not an economist or I'm not a pure IT guy. So I'm in the middle there because I'm representing the commerce field, so I'm representing the business field. So therefore my discussion is going to mainly focus on how digital transformation happening in Sri Lanka and what are the benefits that we are going to we are going to get from digital transformation from as an economy from the business perspective and when it comes to future of banking so I use the word banking here rather than banks so I purposely use that one so because I'm going to talk about the future of banking rather than the future of bank so that's the, the basic uh, thing that I want to mention at the beginning so First, I would like to know, so what's happening? What's going on in your life? So that is the first thing I want to discuss. So what's happening? So we appointed new president and we have another election. So we are in the election queue and there are so many political discussions going on. And in Ch from China, so we are having this coronavirus and it's spreading throughout the, 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 the Italy and the Africa, the, 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 uh, the the Middle East countries and all these things are going to contribute to our economy. So especially, so because of this coronavirus that the, the, the China is not functioning well. So even though we are not observing any kind of a the disturbance to the Sri Lankan economy, so the most of the products that we are importing are from China. So the next two to three months, so there are going to be so many shortages of supply and there will be some kind of an economic downturn, not only Sri Lanka, but all over the country. So within this background, so we are going to talk about digital transformation, how we can transform Sri Lankan economy to digital economy and what kind of benefit we are going to get. So moving further, so this is the current business situation in Sri Lanka. So according to the ADB, so our economic growth rate, so there are no much statistics on 2019 yet, so they have the forecast and we have 2.6 percentage of economic growth rate, that is the, the lowest growth rate in South Asia in 2019. But, but when you think about the, the, the possibilities, so can we turn around this one, so if you go through the IMF uh, forecast for 2023, 
So we are going to have 4.5% of GDP growth rate. Now, not that much. So we were talking about 7-8% GDP growth rate. But in Sri Lanka, so we can achieve according to the prediction, according to the scenarios and according to the environment we are having. So we can achieve 4.5% economic growth rate even by 2023. <laughs> so therefore, when it comes to transformation, so there's so much things going to happen in the country like Sri Lanka because this era is mega economy era. So you can think about China, think about India, think about the, the, the even Brazil, some South American countries. So those are mega economies. Those mega economies are the economies that control in the world these days. So small countries like Sri Lanka. So we don't have much say in that one. So if you think about our scenario much further, right? In Sri Lanka, more than 75% of businesses are small and medium-sized enterprises. So that means we don't have big companies, global companies, Fortune 500 companies. So we have 75% of small and medium-sized enterprises. That means our economy largely run by these small and medium-sized enterprises and they are mostly representing the shadow economy. Most of they are doing business with cash. So that means more than one third of the GDP is co covering with the shadow economy, that means the cash economy. So they, the, they are not accounting sometimes. So we have one third of uh, shadow economy in our country. Then, so we have some kind of an abnormal thing as a country, developing country, compared to other developing countries. So we have high percentage of contribution from service sector. So we were agrarian society in 50 years before, so now we have only 8% contribution from agrarian sector, 57% contribution coming from service sector dominated by the financial industry and telecommunication industry. So those are the two industries that we are going to focus, those are the two industries that we are going to talk about when it comes to digital transformation, technological industry and financial industry together is going to have some kind of a revolutionary the contribution that they, they can make to Sri Lankan economy. Then if you think about the as a whole, so if you think about the foreign trade, so mostly, so we are import oriented country. So we don't export much of the things, so we are not manufacturing much of the things and we are exporting the primary goods. So they are when it comes to our trade balance, so we are always having this negative contribution. It's keep on getting worse and worse throughout the last five to ten years. So then the silver line of this background is what the transformation, so e-commerce is trending. So there are so many e-commerce startups in Sri Lanka, they are trying to come to the business world, they are trying to go to the global world. So but the problem is, the transformation is not happening. So there are individual isolated uh, techie guys, so I can call them as the techie guys. So those people are trying to introduce e-commerce, starting from Pygmy and there are some other uh, the e-commerce startups, the very well known e-commerce startup. So that is the trending pattern in Sri Lanka. So e-commerce is the future. E-commerce is creating opportunities to go to the international market as well as we can penetrate the, the Sri Lankan market to digital currencies. So that's the area that we are going to focus. So to embrace this e-commerce, whether we have the background, so I'm going to talk about the snapshot of Sri Lanka digital to the to 2020, this is the statistics available in the internet by two, uh, for the 2020 January. So we have 21.37 million people, the population is 21 million, and we have mobile connection, that's the, that's the, 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 the remarkable thing. So we have 149,000 percentage from the population, that means we have mobile connection than our population. So that's a 31 million point eight mobile connection we are having. So that's where we can have mobile banking and mobile commerce and all these things because the penetration rate, mobile penetration rate is very high. Then when it comes to internet use, so if you want to go for mobile banking or internet banking, so we need to have internet users, but that is the lacking area in Sri Lanka, but it is growing rapidly. So we have only 10.10 million internet users. Whatever the form is, right? So that means 47% of the people are using internet. That means half of the country is not connected 
So if you think about the global statistics, only 57% of the world are connected to internet. 43% of the population yet to make a phone call. That is the scenario we are having. All the things that we are talking about and the digital transformation and we are talking about so many things in the digital world. So we are dealing with the half of the world. So the rest of the world are not connected, they are not in the, in the internet world. That's why companies like Google, companies like Facebook, so they want to broadcast Wi-Fi and give connectivity to other half of the world. Now just imagine, so we are doing all these tamashas with the 50% of the population of the world, then the rest of the population come to internet. So that's going to be a big, big, big marketplace. So if you think about Sri Lanka also, we are having only 47% per internet users. So if we can convert that one to 75%, then the market might be much bigger and we can have more opportunities for e-commerce and moving towards a cashless society. So when it comes to social media, so the most of the people, so when it comes to internet users, currently the modern day internet users, they are internet usage limited to social media use. Now, for example, just imagine, you wake up in the morning, think about the first internet session that you are going to engage. What is the site that you are visiting? Facebook? Most of them, Facebook. So, just raise the hand if you are going for some stock market, uh, something like that. Right? So, once you go there, so you do all the likes and comments and all these things, then what is the second thing that you do? Then again, most of the time, most of the young people are going for Instagram. Then sometimes they will go to personal emails, sometimes they will go to other social media. Then that is the end of the session. So that's the world we are living in. So most of the internet users are going internet for social media. So we have 6.4 million, that means 30% of the population are having active social media accounts. So they are active in social media. So if you want to bring in some kind of a change, if you want to talk some kind of a the thing that should happen in Sri Lanka, just like digital transformation, so we can use this platform because we can cover one third of the population, but two third of the population is not there, right? So that's the basic statistics of Sri Lanka, digital scenario. So I want to further go into deep into social media overview because most of the people are using social media. So the, the e-commerce era is gone. Now people are talking about social commerce, Facebook commerce, something like that. So therefore we need to focus on social media even though country like Sri Lanka is not going fully for e-commerce, the world move for the social media marketing and social media commerce, social commerce, so Facebook commerce. In Sri Lanka also now you can see so many companies, so many people have come up with the entrepreneurial web pages and they are selling music stuff and they are selling certain things. So that's the, the basic idea of social commerce. So it's connected buyers and sellers. Even though we don't have the platform to go for payments so far, <laughs> Facebook is trying to do that part, but we don't have the payment system, but we have the matchmaking capability within the social media. So we can sell our product and there are so many buyers and the Facebook is creating the market. So that's the trend. So therefore, so we have total number of active social media users, 6.4 million. Then social media users compared to the total population is 30% as I said. Then the growth rate is 8.3%. That's one of the highest rate in the world. Then the percentage of active social media accessing via mobile. That's the, where the mobile revolution comes in. So we have more mobile phone than our population and more and more people instead of using desktop and laptop so they are using mobile devices. That's where the mobility comes into play with the digital transformation. So 98% of the population access into social media via mobile devices. Not only social media, majority of the people now they are accessing to internet through mobile devices. That's where the banks and other financial institutions come up with mobile apps and they are promoting their mobile apps and pushing customers to use their mobile app. So because the, the, the the usage rate, the access to internet is mainly dominated by the mobile. So that's the scenario we are having. So this is the digital, uh, the, the snapshot of Sri Lanka. Now when it comes to financial sector, so 
So I'm, I'm coming to return transformation. Later on, then we need to think about the financial inclusion. So then, if you think about the financial inclusion in the Sri Lanka, so there are 74% of the people in Sri Lanka are with bank. So they have some kind of connectivity through the savings account or through loans or whatever the form. 74% of the Sri Lankans are having connection with the, connectivity with the bank. So they have uh, account. At least they have account with the financial institution that's one of the highest rates. So if you compare with India, it's almost like a 30%. But we have 74% of the population actively engaged with the banking system in Sri Lanka. So that's the, one of the, 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 the remarkable thing. And if you think about even though I, I went to the central bank uh, the database, so there are more than 20 million debit cards. But the statistically, so only 33% of the population are having debit cards in Sri Lanka, the plastic money, non-cash platforms. Then the credit card, we have only 5.3% of the people are having credit card. It's equal to 15 million or 1.5 million or something. Then the mobile money, so that's why we are talking about the e-wallets and other e-payment method, only 2.4% of the population are having the mobile money account, that, that is a very low rate. So then if you think about the making online purchases, now we are talking about e-commerce, we are talking about internet, and we are talking about the online payments, so only 6.2% of the people make a payment online. Now how many of you made a payment online? So most of the urban people the living in Kalambo and the, the urban areas, they used to purchase online, either the locally or from the eBay or Alibaba or whatever. So but only 6.2% of the population are doing that one. So that means 95% of the population are not involving online transaction. Right? So we have infrastructure. So it's, the things are changing. People are using internet. But when it comes to commerce, when it comes to buying, when it comes to transaction through online, so we have the problem because 95% of the population are not in there. Then if you think about the females, so we, even though we don't have a gender gap, so when it comes to compare males and females, the males are dominating when it comes to the credit card and online purchases. So females are very less in numbers, even though our population, we have more females. So that's the scenario we are having, right? So we have good IT infrastructure, we have 3G, 4G, and we have more connections, mobile connections. People get access to internet, and people are using social media, 30% of the population. But when it comes to commerce, so commercial transactions are not happening within the internet. So that's the biggest problem. So we are going to face, and we are going to discuss. But we, not, we should not discourage so, if you think about the scenario we are having, so the, the, the good thing is, so we are having high growth rate, high growth rate in social media usage, high growth rate in internet usage, high level of mobile internet user. So therefore, the basically, people are using technology, right? So we have more mobile phone than our population. That means, people are using mobile phones, people are using technology. So then, when you are using mobile phones, when you start using smartphones, then when you are accessing the internet, then there are so many desires. That, that's where the psychology comes in. So you want to do more things with the mobile. So then what happened? So people are looking for mobile solutions. Sri Lankan society is looking for mobile solutions. So mobile app, we need mobile banking. We need mobile apps. We need mobile the uh, e-channel or something. We need to book our taxi through mobile phone. So those are the desires that we are, we can generate among the people because when they are using technology, so then there are so many things that they can do with that part. So you have to kick, so as a, as a companies or as a bank, so they need to create the desire to use mobile bank for application. That's where the digital transformation happened. People are using mobile phones for communication, right? So that's that's the normal thing. But if people are using mobile phones for transactions, so that is the, the that, that is the starting point of e-cash.
So cashless society, so we need to push the customers or people to use applications. So that that means, so we need to create more and more applications. So we need to have tech companies. So we need to have a IT fast the IT developers who can identify the customers desires and develop application to satisfy their needs and wants then they will install those apps in their mobile now if you think about your own mobile phone usage so how many mobile apps you normally use day to day life definitely there will be a whatsapp or whatever the voice in over internet protocol so there will be definitely social media so instagram or other thing other than that if you think about sometimes some people have point or tell cave, sometimes some people have Google, some people have Pitme, and some people have their own personal financial manager because I have a bad time financial management. So I'm using that one to manage, but I'm not managing, I'm just recording and looking at that one and dissatisfied with about myself and keep on doing the same thing. Right? There are some people doing that one, the applications are there. So if you have desire, to do something, the applications are there. So if you are using Android, you can go for Google Store, Google Play. So then if you go Apple, so then you have both now in Sri Lanka, we have so many applications. That's what we want. We need to let people to use applications and get the power of the mobile. Now what we are talking about smartphone, it's not a mobile phone anymore. It's what it's a very powerful computer, handheld computer we are having. If you think about the configurations of these mobile phones, those are equals to Pentium 4, Pentium uh, 4 to 2 computers at that time, 5 years or 10 years before. So those are very powerful computers we are having. So we can do so many things with this. So that's where we need to take Sri Lanka. So we need to create applications. So people need those things. So if you can create applications, then people will start using those applications. That's what we are looking for, and if you think about the current status, uh, this is the current status of our normal life. So if you go to the left hand side, from my left hand side, so if you want to buy something, then there are online shopping, locally or internationally. Now if you want to think about buy a buns, so I'm just naming that one, not promoting, but for sharing the, the experience. So buy a buns, uh, and the uh, Bao Hotel K, the Taras Hotel K, there are so many online shopping. So from the from the normal grocery stuff to high end electronic items, you can purchase online. You don't need to move your feet, you can log into the internet and you can go there and you can purchase. So if you want to purchase something overseas, you don't need to worry about then there are so many platforms like eBay, Alibaba. So then the Taobao, so there are so many platforms you can order things and they will the, the send that one to your doorstep. Then if you think about the services, so like channeling doctors, so you can do that one via yeah, your mobile phone. So if you want to sell your second hand item, that is also trending in Sri Lanka. Now early days we are talking about Australia and other developing countries, we are talking about people are throwing their furniture, people are throwing their uh, electronic items, the Sri Lankan people going there and collect those things, something blah blah blah, something like that. But that is happening in Sri Lanka also. People are changing products and so laptops they are changing, the electronic items they are upgrading. So then there's an opportunity for second hand market. So that the ikma.lk is creating that one, people are heavily using that. Then if you want the transportation solution, so the local example, the Pikmi, you can use your mobile phone and you can get that service without moving your feet. Then the right hand side, the information and connectivity. So if you want to search anything, so we are depending on Google. So if you have a severe headache, you are not consulting doctor, you consult what? Google. Severe headache, left hand side, severe headache. Then you go, then the, the Google will tell you, okay, what are the symptoms and what are the possible causes? Final one is cancer, always. So then that, once you see that one, huh, there might be a possibility of cancer, then you <laughs> consult a doctor. Otherwise, you go to that one and you identify, it is not a serious one, I can manage myself. Right? So that's the, the world we are having. Then if you want to have a social connectivity, so we have Facebook. So if you want to have a 
data communication, voice over internet protocol. So we have Bible, WhatsApp, there are so many. Then nowadays, if you, if you want to go somewhere, so people are using, not asking, they are not stopping and asking. I, I had a bad experience with that one. I went to Anuradhapura one day. So I, I had a smartphone with my hand. I stopped the guy and asked one guy, young guy from Anuradhapura, how to go to this Nilagiri Mahasaya. Then he told the road and I said, Google him, look at that. So that's how I'm, I, I think actually I, I was very apparent. So that's a, the, that's the, the, the world we are living in, right? The people are using Google, Google Map. The, the lady is telling, okay, turn this way, they turn that way. So I'm guaranteed if you are traveling in Gampa Road, don't worry about turning in small, small road because all are carpeted. So therefore, you don't need to worry about. So the, the Google is very, very intelligent nowadays. So they are analyzing your speed and the traffic and everything. So if you follow the instruction properly, so you can go to the destination with the estimated time. There will be so many things that happen because you need to go to a, go around and something. But if you strictly follow the instruction of Google Map, so because it's using more analytics nowadays, so you can go to the destination. Now if you are thinking about the, 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 the Zoom, the, the video conferencing, so you can have mobile app, so you can attend to meeting through your mobile device. You don't need to go physically, so then it, it reduces the, the distance barrier. So then we have the connectivity to our mobile phone. That's the best thing. So when you are having these applications, so you then you to get these services, sometimes you need to pay. Then if you want to switch the media, that's a, the bad thing for commerce. Now think about in the middle of the night. So you watch tele teledrama and there's a nice advertisement going in. So LED TV 55 inch for 200,000, the free offer you can buy your refrigerator. Now you got the wow feeling, wow I want to buy. But there's no e-commerce, so that e wow feeling, cannot, you, you cannot execute that. They will have to get bad. So then you have to wait, you have to watch the movie or the whatever the drama, then you want to watch the next drama, then you need to go to sleep. <laughs> And next day you need to wake up and you need to go for the, the office and all these things. Then what happened to that wow feeling? That wow feeling will die. So most of the thing, so when it comes to digital market, the, the marketing, so people create wow feeling, but they were unable to capitalize on that one because you need to have a media switch. Media switch means you need to go to the purchasing either physically or using telephone or some other media. But if you have the embedded payment solutions, the payment gateways embedded with the mobile applications and the website, you don't need to think of twice. Right? Once you get the power feeling, you go order, fill the card, and the fill the form, delivery address, everything. Then you insert the credit card information or whatever the payment caller. Then you finish the transaction. Then only you tell your wife, I bought 55 inch TV. Otherwise, what will happen? She will ask, are you crazy? So why do you need 55 inch? Apni maathi mein kuch yada, kuch hi pantry kar par do lakhe theke. Pantry ke apna ekko ekko mat. Your dream is born, and you need to end up with the the, the, the constructing end. So therefore, you can avoid those things by integrating the payment platform into into your the pay the website or e-commerce site or application. That's the the benefit we are having. So all these things we call as life technologies. So we have three big things. We have online markets nowadays, people are preferring online markets and we have online connectivity so we can connect with different different ways of different, different people and we have online opportunity for creating online spending and payments. That's where we are talking about the banking comes in. So the banks and the banking system including central bank should provide opportunity for business people to get the e-payments to your to their accounts. Now I told you at the very beginning, 75% of the businesses are small and medium-sized enterprises. Right? So then if, if you make right this payment integration, payment gateway integration as a very expensive, very hectic process, so then what happened? So they will not be able to integrate that. So that's where we need to be very careful with the regulation and 
what is the transformation that we are expecting, right? So we need to regulate. We need to think about the, the stability of the, the country financial system. But there's an opportunity emerge. So with the technology, the digital transformation is an opportunity. Right? We missed so many opportunities from the throughout the history. Right? So we, we, we miss the industrial revolution, we miss the information revolution, we miss the electronic revolution, we are missing the knowledge revolution, and we have the digital revolution. So we have to grab that one. So therefore, we need to create opportunities for this online spending and payments, and then only, so you can push the customers, push the people to go online. So then, so you need to think about apps that provide online markets, online connectivity or whatever the thing so they need subscription fees they need to pay customers need to pay then if you are not allowing right, if, the, if that particular application not allowing people to purchase that wow feeling will kill so then our, our, we have short term memory as a nation right? we have short term memory as a nation so our impulse are going down very quickly, we get very wow feeling, then it's going down, so at the end of the day we don't, we can't remember 55 TV, refrigerator V, what? So then because, why? Because we are living in so much of complex world, so when you have this wow feeling, you have to capitalize. So then only people will go with the online shopping and online paper. Having said that, the scenario is what? People are ordering online, but they are requesting what? Cash on delivery. That's what the India and Sri Lanka and some so the, the, the South Asian countries are having. So that is the innovative thing that is happening in this kind of country. Cash on delivery. Why? Because we are having serious problem of trust. We are not trusting anyone unless we see the product. So we need to have a look and feel. And we need to see the product, and we need to cut the product, and we need to get the product, then we only be picking. So therefore there is a trust issue, so most of the people are having trust issue. Now think about yourself, how many of you made the, in, the e-commerce transaction? Right? How many of you become a frequent bias? Right? Frequent bias means so whatever things that you want to order, you are going to online. So there are people like that. But most of the people are not like that. So they are going for cash on delivery. One reason is trust. Even I am very particular about disclosing my credit card if the, the, the supplier is not reputed. So no worries about the eBay, no worries about the, the Alibaba, no worries about the what how it all get. Expires it all LK. So I, I don't like to disclose because it's not, not known. So therefore reputation matters, trust matters. So therefore, the e-commerce the need to build their trust. So therefore, so we need to think about that one. And most of the people don't have this credit card and debit card. As I said earlier, only 5% are having credit card. That means 95% of the people don't have that luxury. So that's where the cash on delivery comes into play. So then, other one is bank charges. So if you pay online, so then there are so many charges later on. So credit card payment, if you exceed the 55 days, even though this, they are saying they are giving 55 days, there is a mathematical the calculation of that 55 days. That's not the actual 55 days. So they are having billing cycle from that billing cycle to 55 days. So, so there is a hectic process. So therefore, people don't like to go into that one headache. So they have this bad charges. That is the one aspect here we need to discuss in this forum. So, so the banks are heavily profiting. So if that sometimes so you, you can go to the newspaper and they are declaring quarterly profit. Right? Just like OC said, sometimes I, I can't read out those things. The billions, the billions. So the financial sector is a very profitable sector. So therefore, so they are charging him huge. So therefore, sometimes if you want to go for digital transformation, <laughs> sometimes so the banking system need to reduce their profit margins. So then they need to transfer that benefit to the customer to push the customers go online. So otherwise, what will happen? Now think about this mobile apps, banking apps. So they are asking, okay, you pay a bill, you transfer money through mobile app. Each and every transaction they are charging 50, 50 rupees. Light bill, 50 rupees. Telephone bill, 50 rupees. Water bill, 50 rupees. Credit card bill, 50 rupees. 50 bill, 50 bill you have wake up with 500 rupees payment through the mobile app. That's not the thing that we are expecting. 
if you want to convert the country into digital transformation because people are not willing to go there. You need to push the people to go there. So therefore you need to give some kind of a benefit. Now the central bank is imposing maximum of 50 rupees per transaction. They are charging maximum. They are charging maximum. So that's the, those are the things, small things that we can think about as a bankers. So we need to give the benefit, to show the benefit to the customer. So if they are charging 50 rupees, so instead of paying online, better to go to ATM, withdraw money and pay. So that the charge will be very less, right? Sometimes more permission. So those are the things that we need to think about when it comes to digital transformation of our society. So we need to push people to go online buy, online com the online purchasing. So then we need to have certain things that we need to consider. Majority of the people are having preference for casual delivery. Right? So then it comes to central bank, the statistics. So now according to the census bank statistics I went through, 72% of the cash bulk is with the people, not with the bank. Now think about the, the scenario. We are keeping money, right? And then it's not contributing to the nation. So we are keeping as money. So then the banks are having only 28%, 72% of the cash circulating among the people. So that's the that's a, the that's the thing that we need to change. That India is doing that one. They come up with the 2016, I can remember, demonetization, and they enforce people to go for plastic money or cashless transaction. They are not successful, 100 percent but they have some kind of achievement. So there we need to think about how to change tables. So how can we get this one around? 28% money with the people, 72% with the banking system. So that's the challenge we are having. When it comes to non-cash payment in Sri Lanka, retail transaction, the majority of them are using checks. It's not E, it's check, right? 63%. So there's only 17.6% internet-based payment mechanism. That means through the payment gateways. So that's the scenario we are having. So we need to do something about that. It's not happening overnight. And as a as a bankers, as a the central bank, as a the the, the educators, so we need to do something about that if we want to convert Sri Lanka into digital economy or the digital uh, cashless society, so we have to do a lot. So we have to do a lot to convert this one. So I think you know, know that one. Central Bank of Sri Lanka declared 2020 as a digital transaction year. Right? So they are having some kind of a mechanism to promote and they have digital transaction, they are saying simple, secure and fast but not cheap. So that's that's one of the dimensions that you need to bring into the discussion. So you need to make the transaction cost cheaper. Now as I as I can one I discussed with one uh, bank as they said the so one withdrawal so they are costing 37 rupees. But if you have the internet banking that cost reduced to 8%, 8 rupees per transaction. So then, that, then you have profit, so you are reducing your cost, but still you are charging from the customer. So then, then, when, you, when you think about the modern world, it's, it's a, the, that's a trending thing is don't charge from the customer, charge around the customer. Right? Now think about the newspapers. Now given the newspaper is there, printed version, they are selling for 50 rupees, and if you go to online, so you can read it free. Right? That, that newspaper is freely available. Because why? Because the readability is the proper thing. Right? Printed version, people are not reading newspapers, but they are so the internet and they are using their mobile devices. You need to let people read your newspaper. That's readability, the circulation. So if you have e-version of newspapers, more and more people will read that. So then more and more people will advertise in that one. Then your revenue will go up. That's what we call as don't charge from the customer, charge around the customer. Now think about, I, I'm sharing this one with my MBA students. So now think about Pinkney, now think about Uber. Now think about there are so many other the, 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 the crowd, crowdfunding transportation platform. Now can't we disturb that one? Now they are charging from the three wheel driver and they have to pay a certain amount, so the, the, the various amount, but they are not charging from the customer. Right? So you, they, they don't charge from the customer. That for customers, for us, if we have the app is free, 
the ride is free. Only the payment is what you have to pay for the, the distance that you travel. But there are no new transactions. But if you want to disturb, you can cut down the payment from the drivers also. Now the, there's a the southern province there was issue. So people are protesting against Uber and Pitney. Right? So now the problem is what? The Uber and Pitney charging commission from these drivers. So if you stop charging from these drivers, then both things is free. Customers is free, <coughs> taxi drivers is free. How you can do that? Can we do that? Anyone from that one? So the, there's a way of doing that one. So we want we identify that one. So for each three wheeler to run on road, so they have to get insurance. So the insurance is all, almost 15,000 rupees. Now if you register taxis, right, free of charge. So we are not charging for anything, you charge the register with us. Then people will register. Then if you have more than 100,000, 200,000 three wheelers, then you have a big vehicle free and you can go to insurance company and say, we have 200,000 three wheelers, we want you to have a discount. So not 50,000, we will pay you 12,000 rupees per three wheeler because we have 200,000. So then they will give that discount, then you have the benefit of 3,000. And three wheelers, three wheelers now paying 15,000, you are, you are charging only 12,000, then 3,000 benefit is there, you take only 2,000 as a, as an income, you give that 1,000 to the three wheel driver, then you, you promise, we will reduce your insurance, you have to pay only 14,000. 1,000 rupees is big money for them. Now you are, you are reducing their insurance cost and for each three wheel, you are earning 2,000 rupees into 200,000. Got it? That is the income that you can earn. Then not only insurance, tires, services, there are so many options you can bargain with. So then you can get the discount from that. Give the half of the discount to the three wheel driver. Keep that one. You can earn one big money. So that's where you can twist up things. So therefore we have to think about the, the change that we can bring in. So with the digital transformation. So there are so many opportunities. Always remember, in this world, nothing is yet perfect. Nothing about this mic is not perfect. This is not the, the, the ultimate way of designing the thing. This, this laptop is not perfect. This fan is light is not perfect. This auditorium is not perfect. Nothing is perfect yet. That's where the innovation comes in. So they are always, if you think about the problem, then there are so many opportunities available that you can disrupt the market. So that's where we need to think as a country, as a, as a financial system, what are the opportunities? So if you think, Amya, Uber Dina, Pitme Dina, Uber Dina, Uber Dina, Uber Dina, Uber Dina, Uber Dina, right? Then finish. But always think about nothing in this, nothing is perfect in this world. So therefore, that's where the opportunities come for innovations, opportunities come for so many things. That's why the disruption is happening. Now we spent the digital, digital camera came, so we thought uh, that is the best thing. Then now we are not using digital camera, we have smartphones. So with high megapixel camera, that smartphone itself is not the ultimate. So then that will also evolve. So therefore you have to look at that one. So digital transaction is one aspect that we need to look at. So you have to think about that all the banks are embracing and they are having these mobile apps and they are also pushing customers to go with the mobile app and do the transaction. That is happened. That is <laughs> the, in the discussion. So this trans transaction, automation is happening. But if you think about the two words, adaption is transformation. Now what we are doing in the banking sector, we are trying to convert our transaction into digital transaction. Cash society. So that's what we call as adaption. Changing how we do something. We are doing transaction by cash. So we want to change that one. So instead of cash, use mobile app. That's the change we are expecting. That's what we call as adaption. Technology adaption. Bringing in technology to eliminate the cash transaction and do something, do, do the same thing in a more efficient way. New tool. So we are using the same scenario, but we are using new tool. But when it comes to Transformation that I'm going to discuss is a different thing, changing who we are. That's why I'm, going to, I'm not going to talk about the banks, I'm going to talk about the banking. 
right? So the the, the, the banking, the, the, the whole norm of the banking should change. So traditional banking mindset, you cannot have the same frame and you, can, you cannot think about the transformation. Transformation is a holistic approach to think about the policies, procedures, the, the attitude about the technology adaptation. So that's kind of a, the, the, the holistic change that we are expecting. So it's about retain, break, become a paradista. So it's a totally different thing. New behaviors are expected. New culture should cultivate in the society. So it's not about changing the banking to bank app. Right? Having the, the, the cash deposit machine in bank. So the, those are all automation. So those are all adaption of available technologies. When I did my PhD in 2008, Malaysia they had the cash deposit machine. Now we are having 2019 after 10 years. So we are having this thing. Right? So but it's good, but we are not going far with the technology uh, transformation that other countries are going. So that's uh, but the starting point is good. At least we started. So but transformation is something different. So if you think about the the, the technology, the technical terms we are having, digitization, digitalization, and transformation. So the last thing we are talking about, right? Digital transformation, fundamental change in the leadership. Now it, a, the path should run by the central. Bank. So that, that someone need to lead this one. The central bank is the governing body of the financial system in, the Shri, in Sri Lanka. So they need to lead that one, that transformation. Right? Culture and mindset. So there's a human touch in that one. It's not a pure technological thing. Technology is there. You can use technology. So what you are doing with this technology? Now mobile phone, we all have mobile phone. What you are doing with mobile phone matters. That's what the change. That's what the culture means. Right? So then at the core, enabling speed up the value delivery, new products, services that customers want. So we need to change our framework. We need to go out of our box. So we have always have box. So we have think about certain things. Then what we try to do is some certain people think outside the box, but still you're looking at the box. But when it comes to transformation, don't think about the box. Then to think about the best thing possible. You are not thinking about what you are doing now. You are not thinking about what others are doing. So you have to think about what best possible. That's what the Apple become one of the, the great companies. So people are loving to have Apple because they are I, I hear this like that. What is the best thing possible to try to do it? Don't think about others, think about the box and think without the box. Right? So now that is the transformation. Now if you think about what is happening in banking industry, digitization. Cash into digital cash. Digitalization, the banking process, right? The, the ATM, deposit machines, and the kiosks. And there are so many things. So that is particular digitalization. That means we are changing the processes. We are changing the way we do things. But the transformation is totally new paradigm shift. So that we are expecting in financial industry. Now, there are other definition. Now look at the, the last part. So these are the transformational things that are happening. So bots, robots, chatbots. Then there are so many bots, right? That, that means cyber physical systems that they are in a living in a fourth industrial revolution, right? And so people are using technology, IT plus mechanism, and they are thinking about the cyber physical systems. Now there are opportunities for bots, only channels. So I'm going to explain that one and. Those are the technological stuff. But the, the transformation happened when you think about the frugal innovations. Not innovations, frugal innovations. Liberalization. So we need to think out of the box. Liberalization, the regulation. Now think about the traffic lights. There are traffic lights, they are not always putting green and red and yellow. Then when the, when the, the peak time comes, they bring cash and yellow and the traffic police comes and he is the one who controls them. Then meet of the night, so the, the, the late night, so you don't need to have this grid three lights, so they are, they are blinking, okay, go as your face. So think about, be cautious and go. But certain times, they are controlled. The regulation should be like that. So you cannot control everything at every time, so you need to think the regulation as a traffic light. There are certain times you need to force them, certain times you need to release them. So if you forcing, releasing, forcing, 
breathing in, breathing out approach will create opportunity for liberalization. Then, whether you liberalize or not, then the technological the, the change is happening for blockchain. So, so there are so many predictions. They say blockchain is going to change the entire banking system. So then there are so many opportunities for peer to peer bank. Now think about C2. So we in our country we had C2. Then there's an opportunity for online peer to peer transaction. Right? So crowdsourcing, crowdfunding. Right? So there are so many opportunities. Those things are going to disrupt the banking system. Right? Sometimes mainstream banks will not be able to capture those things, but the possibilities are there. So that's why it says we need banking, we don't need bank anymore. That's Bill Gates 2006 or 2016 said that part. We need banking, we need to have a financial system, but we should not think about the bank. So bank has the frame that we are having. Bank, you know, think about the bank. We have this office, big building, and the front end, and the back end, and the computer system, ATMs, deposit machines. So our mindset is that. But when it comes to modern banking, the digital transformation we are expecting, we need banking. The process we need, but we don't need the place, the bank. So that's the environment we are having. That's the environment we should create. How we can create that one? So we need to have three dimensions of it. First one is tools. That's what we are technology. That technology is there in Sri Lanka. So we are the one of the leading country beginning new technology. 4G, 5G is testing. So therefore technology is there. Then we need to change the processes and practices and the policies. And to do all this, change people. Customers as well as the governance. So both parties need to think about the, the digital transformation as a holistic change, the paradigm shift. So what we are practicing currently can be changed. So you don't need to think as a challenge. So you need to embrace that part. So our era is going into different level. So that's how you can bring the digital transformation. Now otherwise what will happen? You have the tools, you have the processes, but people have changed. So then if you as a banker, banking system, if you don't like to change the policies and procedures, then the people who like to involve in this fintech, financial technology, they, are, they will discourage. So there are so many young people I know, so they are working on this point. The entire world is talking about fintech as an opportunity for non-banking companies to come into financial system. But if you are not allowing that one, so the creativity and the opportunities to reduce cost and it's going to be going for begging. So therefore, so when you are thinking about digital transformation, so you have to think about all these three aspects. The tools, so you have to have these tools, that's what the bots, omni channels, the blockchain is doing. And we have to think about the processors. So then you have to digitalize all the processors. So then we have to change the people from administrators to the customers. So that's the requirement. Now if it comes to bots and how many channels, this is the future bank. Right? If you think about the bank, how they can transform, this is the way. Now they started with ATM. So we introduced ATM in 1990s. Now people are talking about chaos. So you can open, do the transaction and everything the, 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 to the computers. Then we are talking about online banking. Mobile banking, then we are talking about the payment agents like uh, the pay, the what you call it? something like that. So then you have chatbots, that means when your customers are inquiring, you don't need to put person into that one. So there are well trained artificial intelligence enable the chatbots, they can understand the question and they can come up with the suggestions, then they can let the uh, computers or the chatbots to open accounts and getting the information required. So the chatbots are there. Then the bank tellers, the, the, the tellers are there. So that's the post, post machines and the, the, the payment gateways. Then there are APIs, the, the gateways, and the banks are using cloud, multi cloud, and all these things are comes under that one. Cloud, all these are front end things. Customers are going to have many channels that means that means integrated different channels they can do they can choose whatever the thing but they are all interconnected so that's why you have omni channel so you can get the service 
we are different different media. So we future bank need to have those things. Now most of the banks are going into that one. So then the back end also. So you need to have a system switch, the co-banking system, CRM, then the instant deposit machines, the other bank system, the connectivity, and all these things should happen. Now if you don't do, don't have these things, you cannot survive. So those are becoming survival tools. So banks need to go digital. Right? That's that's the banking part. Right? If you want to survive, so you need to go digital because society becomes digital. So growth rate is very high. So people are rapidly going into digital, even though we have only 47%, it's keep increasing. So therefore, if you want to be in the system, so you need to go for this digitalization of banking. So you have a digital bank. So then you can reduce the cost. That's the benefit you're having. Sometimes you have one time cost, but in the long run, so your transaction per transaction cost will be very less. Then it's very competitive business. Then you can transfer that benefit to the customers. That is not happening yet. So right? So that's what happened. So then the banking system should have this kind of change. So that's what the, they are expecting. Then the next thing that we are going to get benefit from is export-oriented e-commerce. 75 percent of the, the businesses are in Sri Lanka, small and medium sized enterprises. So they cannot follow the proper export procedures. So when I go to the statistics, so when it comes to number of documents to be filled for import and export, Sri Lanka has seven documents. So that's one of the highest in the developing countries. So that means it's a hectic process. So they, 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 don't, they don't know how to go through this one and it's a hectic process. So there are some gems in rural areas, those things can be exported. So but the, the, the platforms are out there, so we can create an e-commerce platform like Alibaba did in China. Right? So then we can do that one. So then we can bring in all the small and medium sized enterprises and come up with a market maker, international, global market maker. So we need to sell our product global, otherwise our trade balance will be negative always. So we have to think about how we can bring in dollars, how we can go for e-commerce. Then e-commerce is one of the best thing doing. Now the most of the young people are involving is dropshipping. I don't know whether it is legal, but the people are doing that one because in Sri Lanka, the inward remittance are limited. You cannot get money. So PayPal is not there and it's very difficult. So the, there are people who are going for courses for dropshipping they are opening PayPal account in Philippines or Indonesia or somewhere, then they collect money to that one and somehow they take that. That's the that's where so we are having because the, the freedom is not there. So if you can give that freedom for this one, so then you can improve the e-commerce. So then not only the product, then there are so many talented people in Sri Lanka, so they can provide services. So digital marketing, the content development, content design, so then software, there are soft products that we can capable of doing, the music, then there are so many things that we can export as a country, but there are restrictions because we don't have PayPal, we don't have Skype in Sri Lanka. So, so the, the, when I go to the news, it says PayPal is not considered Sri Lanka as a big economy. Right? So therefore they are not considering about coming into Sri Lanka. But the problem is, if, if they are not coming in, so we need to build something. So then the pay here, so I know this Helakuru, 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 Helakasa, the inventor, is one of the great inventor when I did my PhD, I interviewed him. So he's one of the guys who tried to do that one, I think he got approval from the central bank, he's doing something. So if we are, if the big players are not coming, we cannot shut down and okay, they will let me have a track back here. We need to create that part. But the problem is you have to remember trust matters. So now think about the foreign person is going to pay something in Sri Lanka. So they, the PayPal is not there. So they know PayPal. So PayPal is a very reputed one. So people trust PayPal. But in our web, in our e-commerce side, we don't have it. We have a local thing. Now think about you as a foreigner. Then are you going to pay for that platform? Because it's not globally known. So if you want to develop a platform, you have to make it globally known. Otherwise, what happens? People want pay to them. So then we cannot get the momentum that we can get. So we cannot get the money that we can get. 
So then the biggest issue is money on anti money on drink. So there are so many concerns I know. So we have to think about those things. So it's a kind of balance anti money on drink and not getting the remittance. So it's a big issue. So we need to work out as a the banking system. So we need to work out how we can bring in export oriented e commerce and inward remittance without having problems. So, so that, that's the thing. So always <laughs> to remember when it comes to the international transaction, e-commerce transaction, the reputation matters. We are purchasing from eBay because of the payback, the trust payback. So if the payment platform is not trustworthy, unknown thing, so we think twice, you know, sometimes try the three times, whether I'm going to declare my credit card information to this person. So therefore, we have to think about at, at this one as a the opportunity that we are going to have, we are missing this one in big time. <coughs> then I told you the frugal innovation. Frugal innovation means what now? Think about five years or ten years before, people wanted to have integrated system. Now think about the bank. So they are doing everything. Taking deposit, giving loan, doing lease, everything. So they think about ERP systems. So then it's an integrated system. So people want to have integrated system. When you have compound integrated system, the affordability becomes a problem. Now think about SAP, think about Oracle, ERP. So they are very expensive. So Sri Lanka is a country with 75% small and medium sized enterprises. They cannot afford those things. What do you mean by frugal innovation means make the technology affordable, make it simple. Two things simple. So do one thing at one time. So now there's a there's a big momentum in the world. So for frugal innovation, that frugal innovations create certain fintech companies, financial technology companies. They are identifying certain banking function, and they are becoming expert in that part, and they become a fintech company. They are not banks, so they are just providing that service. So that is what is happening. Is compound systems are going to become simple. So they each and every service going to be provided by different player. That's the fintechs, not the bank. Fintechs. Now when it comes to fintechs, Sri Lanka need more frugal innovations. So then if you think about certain banking. So we need to have this one. We need to have uh, fintechs. So there are because our, our technology, well, that the infrastructure and the human manpower is very good. So we can create these fintechs. So we can provide specialized services. Right? But in Sri Lanka, so we have regulator, so they, they have to go through the main banking system. That's create the dependence. Right? That's create the dependence in the creative guy. So he come up with some kind of uh, the e wallet now for example. Now we are having this touch card. Telephone Salidan was in a hard day. Now if you want to have e wallet Right? Then you can sell those things, sketch card, 2000 rupees, 5000 rupees, 50 rupees, 500 rupees. Then people can get that one, sketch and put the money. Now that is the fintech. I can remember this. The Kotya Patinada, one guy came, the idea like that. Now that is a fintech. So if you have a freedom, so that person should be able to run that one. But we need to regulate. Now the regulation body, you cannot do that one alone. So you have to connect with the banking system and test that one, right? So that's a scenario we are having. So all the fintech should go with the mainstream banks. So then what will happen? So we are having adaption but not transfer. So then the third party developing the technology, the banking system acquiring the technology. That's why I want to ask open innovation, right? So the tech companies, third parties, young guys, Morocco guys, IT guys, so they come up with the platform, so they, but they cannot run that one, so they have to go with the bank. So then the bank will take that technology, that's where the open innovation call, we call that one as open innovation, so that open innovation is there. Sri Lanka is embracing open innovation, but not frugal innovations and print. I'm not blaming, I, I'm just showing the scenario we are having. Right? So they are these fintech companies should embrace all other countries. So we are having these fintech companies, non-financial companies or tech companies coming into the, the providing banking services. Now like just like Easy Cash or M Cash, telcos are there. The Sri Lankan telcos are there, but other companies are not coming into that one because the, the restrictions are 
civil. Now think about a scenario like this. Loyalty cards. Now, now think about, I, I'm using this one as a software geek, so forgive me if you give these brand names. Now software geek is one of the, the biggest connected business. So they have all these things. Now they have one loyalty card. They have one loyalty card program. So that whenever you purchase, you can collect points in that one. So then if you collect points, then across all the stores, you can purchase. Now just imagine, they are creating their own money. You know? Right? They are having their own one loyalty card. Then all the, whenever you purchase, you can collect points. Now if they use this one as a e wallet, you can improve that one. You can ask people to deposit money into that one. The world becomes much better. So you can get the discount. You can have own currency. So it's now about the currency. So currency is what? All about what? Acceptance. Common acceptance. We are accepting currencies. Central bank issuing what? Currencies and we are accepting that one as an authentic because we trusted central bank. Now with this digital transformation, people are having so many things to trust. Right? Now think about early days, now think about the five years before. So we trust news. Right? So we want to we are eager to watch news. We are eager to listen to news. Right? Because news is the validated point. But nowadays what happened? People rely on social media. User generated content, word of mouth, right? So we believe, we started to believe peers, we started to believe our co workers, or the, the co people, they are the authorities. News, some there are certain political preferences, certain people don't watch this particular channel, certain people don't watch this particular channel, certain people don't watch this particular channel. But everyone is <coughs> watching YouTube and Facebook. So they are whatever the information they are sharing in that one, there is a word of mouth. So it's spreading viral. So therefore, when it comes to the acceptance, acceptance is changing. The currency acceptance is changing. Sometimes people are going to accept this kind of a thing. Uh, just imagine a thing. So we can create that kind of environment. Now think about certain, so there are, we have conducted investigation in Prakamara. So they have their inner circle, peer-to-peer -peer transaction. They are not coming into mainstream bank transaction. Right? So that they have their own cycle and they are giving one check to other person, they undersign and give it to other person, they undersign, they are giving to other person and they are running the business cycle. Finally that check comes to that person, he said cancel. Right? Without going into mainstream bank, they run the one business cycle. That is what we have peer-to-peer trust. So people are trusting each other, that's create opportunity for new currencies. That's the transformation. People can create their own currencies. But you can say, Campus and Ali, Salikal, no, plastic calendar. Kitty up the whole water, plastic calendar, plenty of That is the common acceptance. You don't know plenty of it. So that kind of acceptance coming into the technological environment. So that's the opportunity we are having. And I'm going to show another one digital transformation. So we have a big problem with microfinance. As you, as you know, so majority of the people are coming not catered by this bigger banking system they are having because they don't have collaterals. So because, because our lending is more traditional. Right? So therefore if you don't have collaterals, you don't get the loan. Right? So therefore there's therefore, there an opportunity for microfinance. But the microfinance become a hectic problem in Sri Lanka now. So we are talking about the problem of microfinance. Because they are charging heavy interest. Now how you can manage that part? So we can introduce mobile wallet in India and some African countries. They are using this digital transformation to avoid the, the what do you call the disturbance of microfinance industry. So in Sri Lanka, they are having so high default rate. So if you want to avoid that part, so you can use digital mobile wallets. So you can introduce mobile applications that will change the game of the microfinance in the future. That's what we have to do. Now, we have the transaction. Now think about, if you want to buy something online, now think about the price of the book is 1000 rupees. You pay to credit card and you pay 1000 rupees. Now think about, the Amazon is the market maker. Now they are getting the 1000 rupees and the, they are normally there is a 40% or 30% markup to the seller. Now they are keeping that 40% and giving 6000, 600,000 to publish, whoever they publish the book. Then the publisher, only giving 20% to the customers from the markup price, both of them will get 200. 
Now think about all that is going to be 200 rupees, but the customer is paying for 1000 rupees. Now who's the, who's the one earning? The middleman is the one. Just like they are talking about rice, they are talking about the vegetable, but when it comes to financial transaction, that is all the same. So the middlemen are taking the cut. Now not only middlemen, now think about the involvement is bad, is also safe. Right? When you purchase, when you pay online, so that the bank will charge from you 50 rupees or something. Then, if you are, if you are using credit card, if you are delaying 50, 50 days, 55 days, they will start charging 58, 28% from your credit card. Then from the, the, the market maker, so banks will charge 3%. Then the, from the publisher, when they are transferring money to an author, then they will charge bank. Then the author will pay something to other people who pay below something, they will charge. So therefore, when you think about this transaction, there are so many intermediaries are getting benefit, not the two notes, two ways. Now, we want to break this part. The technology is, is thinking about that part. That's where the blockchain comes in. So blockchain is capable of eliminating the intermediaries. Now, we are connecting to Facebook. Do we need Facebook to connect people? No. So because Facebook is collecting huge amount of information about people and they are earning money even though it's free. So therefore people are looking for options for eliminating middlemen including the banks. Including the banks in the media, including the central bank. Right? So that's the scenario of the ultimate digital transformation or ultimate aim of the blockchain. Now what happened is, the, now bank identify blockchain as a good technology, they are using blockchain. But when it comes to actual blockchain, the cryptocurrency, is ultimate aim was what? Developing their own currency without having accepted the mainstream currency. Cryptocurrency is that one. The Bitcoin is that one. So they are creating cyber currency or digital currency within the network. Sometimes we don't accept. That doesn't matter. Within the network, people who are accepting, they accept that part. So that is the, the, the starting point of the blockchain. So therefore, the ultimate aim of the blockchain is come up with the financial system without intermediation. But banks are using, and central bank is also testing how we can use blockchain technology to strengthen the banking system. But the, the purpose, the the ultimate aim of the blockchain technology was eliminate the middleman, right? So that's a thing. So that's the technology we are having. Now, all these things are pushing us. When you listen to this one, it's very attractive. But can you go to that? Can you do the transformation? But when I go to, no offense, I'm just sharing information. Now there's huge regulations. Now payment and settlement system can go, central bank is the sole authority, they are the ones who are controlling this. So I just go through those things, then there are so many circulars controlling that. There are so many directions and circulars. That's the central authority we are talking. Then there are another circular, and there is another circular, there is another circular, and that is serious regulation. It's not freedom. Right? So I'm, I'm not arguing about that one, but it's not freedom. So we have to regulate. They, are, they, are, they have their mandate to safeguard the country, safeguard the finance system. So they have their mandate. But the problem is, when it comes to transformation, thinking outside the box is limited by these things. They have these, these, now th these things are enforced by 2005. So they are very good at predicting. I think I am very glad about that one. So they think about this kind of thing happen and they are enforcing guidelines to monitor that one. So the problem is there are good things and bad things in that. So, so sometimes so when you go through that part as a techie guy or tech, uh, the, the, the fintech guy, so it's too busy, so it's too, too much control sometimes I feel. Personally I feel. Now when it comes to the, the, the payment, e-payment, so there's one company and there are a few others emerging but dominant is there's one uh, company called Nagapi, right? So they have, that's so when I go to the annual report, so the net profit is 50-45%, gross profit is 50 plus percent. Wow! So they are manufacturing some kind of a goods, but it's all about earning money from money. So that's good. So, so that's the only solution we are having currently. 
But now think about the good old days, 10, 15 years. We have telecom only. Right? So we have one entity. So we have telecom only. So we, we are not having this kind of a tech development. But they decentralize. So they have multiple techos are there. Right? The, the companies, they have more than six companies. Then that create competition, that reduce the price, that give the option to select and people are doing this. I'm just proposing, can't we do this part for this? Payment gateway, so we have multiple, at least two, then we can go through those things, then just create a competition, then allow the transformation to happen. So that's the one of the options. So it's, it's always trade off between freedom and safety. Same plan the financial system, we have to strengthen our finances, but it's not happening. So that's, that's the thing. So our GDP growth rate is 2.6. So uh, trade balance is minus. So even with this, all these things, it's not happening. So therefore, sometimes, this, so I'm not referring to central bank. So this in blockchain, that there's a the technological term called central authority. So the central authority is the problematic person in this the transformation. Now think about Sri Lanka banking system. So we have multiple banks and they are having their own competition, they are not connecting. So they are connecting to regulator as the central bank is monitoring, clearing house, Langa Bay. So then they are, they are trust builder is what is crib. So they are depending on crib. Now all these things are intermediates. So they are controlling and guiding the business. But as the blockchain comes in, right? So it's all about, it's happened, it's both people trust bank. There are no any other way that we need to trust bank because they are regulated and because their transactions are safety. So we because inherently we believe banks. Because why? Because we trust banks. So that's a traditional banking system we are having. So we have <coughs> banks and we have central authority to regulate and we have central clearing house to clear everything and they are monitoring what's going on. But the blockchain is what? It's a mesh network. There are so many multiple people involved in that one. So then people started to trust this network. That's part of the digital transformation. People are connecting online and they are started trusting each other. There's an online trust, nothing about supply chain. So when you are using ERP system, so all the suppliers are connected with this, this one. The extra net, two extra net. So then they are involved, they are working as a one team. So when you are working as a one team, so then that you, you, are, you are trusting each other. So when you transfer that trust that you are having for the bank to the partners you are dealing with, then that will create safety environment and peer-to-peer -peer environment. So then you can have a network and through this network, you can share information, you can let other people know about the transaction. Then you have decentralized data system. Each and every person in this network is going to have a transaction history. So then, then the automatically, so they are having this trust building network and they can transfer money and do the transaction through that network. That's the whole idea of decentralized data system and that's what the blockchain is doing. So if I explain blockchain for the more. Now assume A want to pay to B. So A to B, so he wanted to pay to 200 rupees. He sent that message to all the people in the network. Right? And all the people in the network will authorize that one. Okay, this is acceptable, 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 agree. Then they will keep the record. That's what we call as block. That will be in block. You cannot change that one, you cannot eliminate that one, all are encrypted. So people cannot hack that one because within the network, so they have the, 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 the what do you call, the connectivity and the safety. Now once you get the agreement, then A will pay money to B. Then everyone is knowing that one, that transaction is recorded in multiple places, that's where how the Blockchain is eliminating the intermediates. Now no banks, no central bank. So within this one, so you can do that. As I told you at Peta Market, manually this is happening. See it too, it's kind of this thing, right? So but if you think about this technological thing, so low cost, you don't need to pay intermediates, 
bank charges, nothing there. It's fast, so it's very secure and it's smart. So you can have smart, smart contract. Now for example, if you are sending message, so you can quote that one. So if this happened, you do this kind of thing. If scenario. So then if that happened, then automatically the contract can execute certain instructions. So that's why people have smart contracts and it's self-regulated. So you have your own terms, you have your own uh, regulations within the frame. So that's the ultimate of the blockchain. So now if you accept this one, then more and more people can use this technology to eliminate the intermediaries to redo the whole. So that's the ultimate. So then the peer-to-peer -peer revolution. Now in Sri Lanka also, there's one app called Helios. Cash pattern, now think about the crowdsourcing platform like Kickstarter. Oh, all these things are, banks are not involving, but people are sharing money. They are doing transactions each other so through the mobile application. So there is a peer-to-peer -peer revolution also. So there is a tendency, people are going to have peer-to-peer transactions. So then now the loyalty card may be coming to that one. So within the supermarket chain, you can have your own currency. Even though others don't accept that one, so within the chain, you can accept that. Now just imagine, one company comes and they integrate all these loyalty cards into one. The one company is trying to do that one. Car deals, scales, software, you can everything. So you are creating one big wallet. So then you can use the points across the, the shopping mall. Kills point you can share with the targets. Targets point you can redeem in software. Software things you can redeem it somewhere. So that's what we call as peer to peer transaction. So possibilities are there. As I told you, the current status is not the ultimate status. So there are so many things can happen and it is happening. So we need to embrace that. So we need to we have traffic lights. Not the not Stopping everything, so we need to become a traffic guide. When required, you need to control. When required, you need to give the control to other people. Otherwise, let the transformation flow. So then you can our country can go to the next level. So now when you think about the transformation, now these are the things I talk, what omni channels. So we need to come up with a solution for inward remittance. Then we need to embrace Google innovation in financial sector. Then we need to let the emergence of the fintechs and we need to get the ideas what the central bank is doing good good the, the, the banking system can use them as open innovations and get those technologies so then the financial liberalization so regulations should be loose now I don't, I don't say you have to eliminate all the barriers but we need to we need to, we need to become watchdogs not hunting dogs so just look at if something goes wrong so you need to have precautionary the, the, the protocols, then the blockchain and the bills. Now if you want to embrace this banking industry chain, the digital transformation, we have to change the mindset from the policy makers to the bankers to the citizens so, and the, the companies or the, the, the service providers. So we need to understand this is the thing that we need to take into China. So we need to go digital, we need to transform our society something different than what we are experiencing. So to do that one, the so future banking is give customers seamless digital banking experience without having much cost. So you cannot have abnormal profit. So you have to sacrifice on behalf of the nation, on behalf of the country's development. So we have to sacrifice. So we don't need banks, we need bank. So then if someone else providing banking function, so then we have to provide facilities, then that will be the foundation for digital economies. Then people will innovate. Then they will come up with the frugal innovations. So with that one, so what we have to do, if we want to come up with a digital transformation, we need to break the shell. So that so we need the shell, we are living in a shell. So we are having all the regulations and all the control. But the, the, the transformation is inside the burning. So if you can let it go, 
then there are so many opportunities we can have. So, but the problem is, so we are not taking this first moving advantage. So we are always looking at the best practices. We are looking at, we are testing so many things. So what the problem is, when we are not embracing the change, when we are, when we are not going for the technical uh, leadership, then we are always become assimilation. Now that's what my snail shell work model says. So where you want to be? Now think about the snail shell like this. Now if you are in point A, think about the next wave. Right? So now think about it's going and think about the next wave. Where are you going? So your distance will be very less. If you are in a point B, you will have much bigger distance. If you are in a point C, so you have more. But if you are in point D, so you will get totally different thing. Now my, my theory says what? So if you think about the technology development of countries, now think about Singapore, China, uh, Hong Kong and those countries, from 1960s, they were the leaders. They were the ones who embraced the change. They were the ones who bring change. Now think about, think about Singapore. They convert everything into E. If you want to buy ticket from for railway, so you have to go to the chaos machine. No options. No chance. Right? So therefore, if you think about it as a country, where are we now? Where are we want to go? And where are we want to, where are we want to be? So if you think about the snail shell, so where are you, where are the next wave? Now we are passing the industrial revolution, information revolution, knowledge revolution, digital revolution, or industry four. And next wave, so we will be the same. So from 1960s, we are talking about the Sri Lanka is a developing country, Sri Lanka is a developing country. So if you want to change that, so we have to do something in a different way than what we are doing. So therefore, we need to take actions and we need to change our mindset in this snail shell where you want to be. Then if you want to be at D, then definitely you need to get paradigm shift decisions, paradigm shift mindset to bring change. Then the next wave, so you, we will get big leap economically, socially, so we will go fast. So that's uh, the message. So we want to change and we want to transform our economy into digital economy. So the transformation is not adaption. So if you want to transform, so we need to bring all this tick chain. Now we had that spark. Now with the new president, we got the, the painting going on. Now all done. Right? So because that's the that's thing. So we get spark, we are not capitalizing. So as a nation, so therefore if you, as a central bank is embracing this, they as a digital transaction here, 2020. So we need to bring this change. Permanent, not in a superficial way. So we have to think this on deeply. So from the policy makers and we have to influence to all the people. So then we can bring something different that we experience as a nation. So thank you very much. So if you have any questions, can uh, raise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nagui Kumsi, for that interesting and uh, futuristic lecture. Um, now it's time for the Q&A session, and we can accommodate a few questions from the audience.